Hello everyone, I'm Brendan LePaul and you're watching Updates at Noon. Making the headlines today. 1.3 million civil servants to receive 700 ringgit bonus payment. Trangano flood situation improves with only one PPS operating. A total of 1.3 million civil servants who are in grade 56 and below will receive a one-off special financial assistance of 700 ringgit on 17 January as a token of appreciation for their contributions in public service delivery throughout the year. About 1 million retired civil servants will receive 350 ringgit on the same day. The Public Services Department, JPA, in its official Facebook posting also uploaded a circular signed by its Deputy Director General, Development, Dato Dr. Zukapli Muhammad, dated 27 December 2022. According to the circular, the special financial assistance will also be received by Public Service Officers of the Management and Professional Group, as well as the Implementation Group, who are still serving on 17 January 2023, covering permanent, temporary, and contract of service, COS, appointed officers, officers on full paid leave, officers on half pay leave and officers on leave without pay. It is also eligible to be paid to appointed officers under the Malaysian Short-Term Employment Programme, MySTEP, who have served for at least six months in 2022 and are still serving under the programme on the stipulated date. The Para State Government yesterday tabled the anti-party hopping bill as a measure to prohibit members of the Para State Legislative Assembly from switching political parties. It was presented by Para Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Sarani Muhammad during the State Legislative Assembly sitting. The Menteri Bursa added there are five clauses proposed in the amendment of the bill. Among them, the brief title, provisions on the commencement of the proposed enactment, the meaning of political party and contingency vacancies in the State Assembly. The bill is expected to be debated and the decision will be determined today. Datu Sri Sarani was previously reported to have said that the coalition of Barisan Nasional, BN and Pakatan Harapan, PH, to lead the Perak state government will be maintained until the end of the term for the development and well-being of its people. The Perak State Assembly meeting yesterday approved the Perak Supply Bill 2023 enactment amounting to 1.19 billion ringgit, which focused specifically on driving economic growth and an agenda to improve people's well-being. Now, it was tabled by the Dato Sri or by Dato Sri Sarani last Thursday with the theme of Prosperous Perak, Prosperous People. During his running up speech, Dr. Sri Sarani said the supply bill is vital as it will dictate the level of preparedness for state government in facing the economic uncertainties. The bill is also an indicator for state government to spark a momentum to ensure all plans stipulated under the Perak Sajatra 2030 plan goes accordingly. For Perak's 2023 budget, 395 million ringgit was allocated for development expenditure, while the remaining 794 million ringgit is for operating expenditure. And 
still to come, Malaysia remains free from Nigleria Fowlery infection. Stay with us. And welcome back. The situation in states hit by floods since the end of last month is reported to be improving with only one relief centre, PBS, still operating in Trungano. According to the Secretariat for the Trungano Disaster Management Committee, a total of 53 people from 12 families are at the PPS at the Kampong La Mosque in Basut since yesterday. The victims are expected to be at the PPS for a long time, as most of them lost their houses in the floods. Meanwhile, the number of people in Sanakan Sabah who were affected by the high tide phenomenon and were being accommodated at the PPS at Sekolah Kebangsaan Sungai Anibdua has reduced to 652 people involving 113 families compared to 688 people from 121 families last night. The Meteorological Department of Malaysia, Met Malaysia, has advised residents in the East Coast states to remain vigilant even though the situation due to the floods is recovering as continuous heavy rain is still expected to occur because the northeast monsoon has not ended. Malaysia has yet to record any cases of Nigleria fowlery infection, but members of the public have been urged to be vigilant and take appropriate measures when carrying out activities related to fresh water. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hesham Abdullah said this includes avoiding digging or tampering with any sediment at the bottom of lakes, ponds or rivers where amoeba can be found. The public is also advised to avoid activities such as diving or swimming in water that may be contaminated by amoeba that can enter the nasal cavity directly. Another step is to wash the body with treated water and soap after performing activities in the water and immediately seek treatment when experiencing fever, headache, vomiting or neck stiffness, especially after doing activities in the water. Nigleria fowleri is a thermophilic amoeba or protozoan, single-cell organism that can be found all over the world, especially in freshwater habitats such as lakes, ponds, rivers, hot springs and in the ground and can cause severe brain infection, which is primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, PM, which is usually fatal. Nigleria fowleri is also known as brain-eating amoeba because it is able to cause damage to the brain through infection of the spinal cord. Yesterday, South Korea reported the first case of infection involving a local man in his 50s who died on 21st December after staying for four months in a Southeast Asian country before returning to the Republic on 10 December. A total of 1.1 billion ringgit of various types of goods such as drugs, alcohol and cigarettes were seized by the National Task Force, NTF, through the implementation of Op Benteng since May 2020 until 26 December 2022. Chief of Defence Force General Tan Sri Afeni Buang said the success was made possible through cooperation between 19 security agencies under NTF in preventing the entry of illegal immigrants and curb the COVID-19 outbreak in Malaysia. 
Tansri Effendi also noted that throughout Op Benteng period, the NTF had made 7,490 arrests involving 1,444 skippers, 23,894 illegal immigrants and 1,377 smugglers. <laughs> Ini adalah disebabkan kerjasama antara agensi-agensi di mana pertukaran dan juga pengkongsian maklumat perisikan yang efektif, perancangan bersama yang mampan serta semangat setiap kawan yang utuh. That NTF operating module should be a reference and blueprint for border controls operations in the future. He said this during a press conference after the appreciation ceremony for obtaining services at Wisma Pertahanan yesterday. The NTF, which comprises 19 security agencies, tasked to safeguard the country's borders at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, will be officially disbanded on Saturday, 31st December, after two years of operations. And in conjunction with the year-end holidays, North-South Expressway Plus has gazetted a temporary suspension order for all maintenance and upgrade works. The highway operator also stated that no lanes will be closed until the 2nd of January next year to avoid congestion. However, Plus said there might be some road closures to accommodate works of removing vehicles involved in accidents, clean-up works at the accident location and critical maintenance works for road hazards that expose road users to safety risks. Plus also reminded highway users to follow the time travel advisory TTA and plan their journey ahead. The TTA schedule can be obtained through Plus official website as shown on the screen. Highway users are advised to visit Plus Twitter page and its official mobile application or Putri Chatbot for the latest traffic updates. For emergency assistance, users can contact PLUS hotline as shown on the screen. China cancelled COVID tests for foreign travellers. There are more coming up in the foreign segment. But first, one person died during a highway piled up involving hundreds of vehicles in central China. A sudden buildup of fog occurred at the Yellow River Bridge in Zhengzhou, which caused a traffic accident involving the collision of multiple vehicles, claiming one life. Other viral videos posted online showed the mangled remains of several vehicles that had crashed into others. State media reported the accident occurred due to low visibility from fog near the city of Tengzhou, Henan province, and involved at least 200 vehicles. Emergency rescue efforts were carried out soon after the accident occurred, and the crash site is currently being cleared up for the normal resumption of traffic. Road accidents are common in China due to a lack of strict safety controls. In September, 27 passengers died after a bus transporting them to quarantine facilities in southwestern Guizhou province flipped over on a motorway. International travellers to China will no longer need to do a nucleic acid test for COVID-19 upon arrival from January 8, 2023, but will be required to declare the results of the nucleic acid test taken within 48 hours before entry. The Civil Aviation Administration of China, CAAC, said that it will steadily step up the resumption of international passenger flights to meet the needs of international travellers and promote foreign trade. Policies such as limiting each operational foreign airline to one inbound route and a maximum of one trip per week would be cancelled as of 8th January. The CAAC added that inbound flights will no longer be defined as high risk and the 75% passenger load factor limit for inbound flights will be cancelled also on the same date. Practitioners have been required to do a good job in personal protection and health monitoring. The flight crew will still be required to wear masks and passengers will also be suggested to wear masks. 
Australia is making no change to its rules around allowing travellers from China into the country despite measures by some countries to require mandatory COVID-19 tests. Its Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, said the government will take the appropriate advice from the health experts before making any decisions related to COVID-19 policy. Since China relaxed strict measures to stop the spread of the coronavirus, the country has experienced a surge of cases, overwhelming hospitals and healthcare facilities. This has prompted countries, including the United States, India and Japan, to impose restrictions on travellers from the mainland. Well, what we'll do is we'll take uh, health advice, uh, not just when it comes to China, uh, when it comes to every country. Uh, there are outbreaks in, in various parts of the world. Uh, we'll follow uh, the health advice. Of course, uh, what, what is occurring in some parts of the world as well is that people have to get tested uh, before they get on a plane uh, as well. So there are various, uh, various methods uh, we'll examine. Australia and China recently resumed diplomatic dialogue after relations between the countries hit a low point following criticism by Australia of China's handling of COVID-19. This month, Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong became the country's first government minister to visit China since 2019, and Australian Trade Minister Don Farrell was reported as planning to visit China in early 2023. Meanwhile, the United States will impose mandatory COVID-19 tests on travellers from China, joining India, Italy, Japan and Taiwan in taking new measures after Beijing's decision to lift stringent zero-COVID policies. Beginning 5th January, all air passengers two years old and older will require a negative result from a test no more than two days before departure from China, Hong Kong or Macau. Will strictest COVID regime of lockdowns and extensive testing, putting its battered economy on course for a complete reopening next year. Beijing has faced international criticism that its official COVID data and its tally of deaths are inconsistent with the scale of its outbreak. The big one. Bolivian police have detained Luis Fernando Camacho the governor of Santa Cruz and a prominent opposition leader. Authorities have not declared why Camacho was arrested, but he recently helped lead many weeks of protests that blocked streets and halted trade in the relatively affluent farm hub of Santa Cruz. The protests relate to the national government's delay in carrying out Bolivia's population censors, a census that would likely result in Santa Cruz, which has long butted heads with Bolivia's highland political capital, La Paz, securing more tax revenues and seats in Congress. Camacho was taken to a local airport to be flown to La Paz. Bolivian Interior Minister Carlos Eduardo del Castillo said on Twitter that police had detained Camacho without giving further details. Opposition Senator Eric Moron said in a video Camacho had been taken by helicopter to an unknown location. Santa Cruz Parliament's President Zvonko Matkovic said Camacho was kidnapped in his own land without any detention warrant. Protesters entered two airports in Santa Cruz, footage showed, in an apparent attempt to prevent Camacho from being transported to another location. And in sports, Mbappe forever haunted by World Cup Blues Stadium. The anti-doping agency of Malaysia, Aramas, have yet to receive any feedback from two weightlifters who are alleged to have failed their dope tests during the 2022 Sukma weightlifting competitions in September. Adamas director Azura Abidin said both weightlifters who were medal winners in the Sukma competition have 14 working days from the date the letter was issued on 23rd December to decide whether to accept the results of the doping test or request for sample B to be tested. 
For the time being, Azura said both weightlifters will remain suspended until Aramas receives a reply as to whether they want to seek a hearing or admit guilty. Yesterday, the Malaysian Weightlifting Federation MWF president, Dato Ayub Rahmat, said two weightlifters who had won medals at the Sukma, which was held from 16 to 24 September in Putrajaya, were confirmed positive for the banned substance, anabolic androgenic steroids by Aramas. Previously, three weightlifters, two from Trunganu and one from Perlis, filled the doping test a few days before Sukma began in September. Following the incident, MWF withdrew from the Games after the organisers allowed the two states involved in doping to continue participating in the Games. Meanwhile, Azura said the hearing involving the three weightlifters was expected to be heard in January or February next year. And in football, Kylian Mbappe said he will never get over the disappointment of losing the World Cup final after the France Stars got the winner on his return to action for Paris Saint-Germain yesterday. Euh, personnellement, je ne vais jamais digérer. Maintenant, euh, comme j'ai dit, euh, mon club n'est pas responsable de, de, de cet échec euh, en sélection. Donc euh, j'ai essayé de revenir avec euh, l'énergie la plus positive possible. Et euh, j'ai essayé de, dès aujourd'hui, essayer d'amener un élan en mon équipe pour, euh, pour revenir avec la victoire et, et continuer notre saison où on est, est invaincu. C'était une parenthèse Coupe du Monde, c'est la sélection, le club, ça n'a rien à voir. Mbappé said he had been through some difficult times since the defeat, but he showed few signs of the setback in Qatar as he won and converted a 96-minute penalty to give PSG a last gasp to one win against Strasbourg on Liga A's resumption following the World Cup break. Neymar, who was left in tears after Brazil were knocked out by Croatia in the quarterfinals of the World Cup, was sent off for two yellow cards in PSG's victory. <laughs> Rafa Nadal said that it is good for tennis that Novak Djokovic was back in Australia for the 2023 Australian Open after the Serb was forced to miss last season's event when he was deported from the country because of not being vaccinated against COVID-19. Novak is here. Good for, for tennis, good for uh, probably for the fans. Uh, and let's say, you know, I mean, best players uh, on court, always better. The Spaniard was speaking in Sydney yesterday on the eve of the United Cup mixed team tournament featuring 18 countries, split into six three-team groups playing in three cities, Sydney, Perth and Brisbane. Each team plays two men's singles, two women's singles and a mixed doubles against the two other teams in their group with Nadal Spain up against hosts Australia and Great Britain in Group D in Sydney. The tournament commences today with the USA playing the Czech Republic, Italy against Brazil, Greece taking on Bulgaria, as well as Australia versus Great Britain, Switzerland versus Kazakhstan and France versus Argentina. The winning country from each group will play a regional final with the three winners of these plus the best runners-up progressing to the semi-finals in Sydney following the final on 8 January. Meanwhile, Australian Open Tournament Director Craig Tiley said that he has a great deal of confidence in the Australian public that Novak Djokovic will be welcomed back to the country nearly a year after the Serb was deported from Australia for not being vaccinated against COVID-19. Now, Djokovic arrived in Australia on Tuesday ahead of his bid for a 10th men's singles title at next month's Australian Open. In November, the Australian government granted the Serbian a visa to travel to the Grand Slam event, saying it had decided to revoke the decision to cancel Djokovic's visa after considering all relevant factors. Since the cancellation of Djokovic's visa in January 2022, all COVID-related border restrictions have been removed in Australia, including the requirement to provide evidence of vaccination status to enter the country. The former world number one won the season-ending ATP finals last month and victory at the Australian Open would bring him level with Rafa Nadal on 22 Grand Slam titles. The 2023 Australian Open takes place at Melbourne Park from 16 to 29th January. Salam sejahtera dan salam perpaduan. 
Kesihatan dan kecerdasan adalah kekayaan bagi setiap individu. Tahun 2023 diharap terus mewarnai hidup kita dengan aktiviti-aktiviti sehat seluruh rakyat Malaysia. Marilah bersama-sama saya, Hena Yo dan Kementerian Belia dan Sukan meraihkan tahun 2023 dengan tekad dan azam melihat golongan belia kita terus cegas, sehat serta aktif sebagai generasi masa hadapan negara. Saya dan Kementerian Belia dan Sukan akan terus meningkatkan martabat sukan negara serta merealisasikan kod sukan selamat kepada semua. Saya menyeru seluruh rakyat untuk kekalkan gaya hidup sihat, bertenaga di samping bersama-sama menjaga keharmonian dan perpaduan. Selamat menyambut Tahun Baru 2023. That ends updates at noon. Wrapping up with a reminder of our top story today. 1.3 million civil servants to receive 700 ringgit bonus payment. Tune in to news at 10, coming up at 10 p.m. on my free view, Saluran Berita RTM. You can stream the channel by visiting RTM Clicks web portal or mobile app. Till then, I'm Brendan Paul. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to TV2.